Hello everybody, JC here from Jason's Fad. Hope you guys are having a good day. And if you are, trust me, it's about to get better because we're going to be learning about the get line function. And um, it's so exciting because for the first time, we're going to learn how to receive inputs from our keyboard and do something with the input that we receive. So it promises to be exciting. All right, guys. So without further ado, let's just get started. So for starters, let's try to understand the syntax of the get line function. So and this is where the syntax was specified in our man pages. And if you also observe, you realize that there's another function called the get delim, which happens to be a sister function to get line, but it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. So we are just going to be constraining ourselves to the get line function. Now, if you realize from the get line function that we actually have three parameters to it, the first of them is a double pointer to a char. The second right here is a pointer to a size T data type. And the third is a file pointer. Now to understand how this works, I'm going to try to explain them backwards, starting from stream to end to line pointer. All right. And another thing is that I'm going to be giving a very minimal explanation so it doesn't spook you guys. Okay. So I just want it to be as beginner friendly as possible. So first things first, the stream. Now stream just helps us specify where we'll be reading our text from. Okay, so in this case, we want to be reading our text from our keyboard. So if you specify right here the standard inputs, what it means is that the get line function will retrieve the text from our keyboard. That's the implication of what would happen. And usually when this text is retrieved, it's stored in a buffer. This buffer can be created manually by you or it can be created under the hood by get line. But we are going to analyze that in a little bit later. But for now, a buffer will be created to store the text and the size of the buffer that is created will be stored right here in this variable n so that's what happens so that's the implication of this n now the third uh, the the third one i want to talk about is the line pointer what a line pointer does is that it stores the address of the buffer that was created okay so the stream right here specifies the stream through which you will be retrieving your text in our case happens to be the standard input or the keyboard and that text is stored in the buffer n specifies the size of the buffer that was created under the hood finally a line pointer right here this double pointer switch has stores the address of the buffer that was created so if you just check out the description you will see what i was talking about so get line reads an entire line from stream storing the address of the buffer containing the text into line pointer so i hope this makes sense so let's just try to understand this right now in code so join me right here let's write a simple program to just print out um, our names on the terminal and to get started, I'm going to use my standard live.h header file so that I'm able to use malloc and free to create memory and free it. Okay. Next, let me just create this variable right here to hold the size of the buffer and let it be something like 10. Um, next, I'm going to create my buffer using malloc. Size of char multiplied by n okay so this looks good and to make it much more interactive i'm just going to put this prompt which says enter name okay next i'm going to call my get line function right here and first things first i'm going to pass in the address of the buffer remember from our explanation that um this double pointer holds the address of the buffer that was created so i'm going to pass in the address of the buffer the next thing I'm going to pass in the address of this n right here, which happens to be the size of the buffer that was created. So I'm going to pass in and n, just like that. And the stream right now will be standard input because we are looking at our keyboard. So this looks good for now. Now let me just do a simple print f. I'm going to say name is the cent s, just like that. And then um, once I'm done with that, I'm going to say um buffer size now if you realize and when i actually print this out on my terminal um this next text will be on a new line because your stream usually contains a new line automatically so i'm not going to have to add this if not i'm going to leave two spaces on my terminal so right i'm just going to write buffer size is percent ld just like that and then 
I'm going to write here both and n, just like that. So everything looks good for now. Once I'm done, I'd like to free my buffer to make sure I don't have any memory leaks. So bullseye, let's do a GCC on this. Run this. So check this out, guys. I currently have a prompt to type in my name. So let me just type in name like Jack. So everything is working as expected. It says name is Jack and buffer size is 10. So everything looks good for now. Now, what, what do you think would happen if I type in a name that is longer than the buffer size? Because right now, if you check this out, Jack is actually four characters while the buffer size is 10. So the buffer size is greater than the line. So what if I typed in a name that was longer than this um, a buffer size of 10? So let's just try that right now. So let me type in a name something like um, Victor um, Kelechi on Wuz or so. Um, Kelechi on Wuz are actually Nigerian names just in case they sound strange to you. All right, so I'm going to hit enter. Bullseye, check this out, guys. So it tells me right here, name is this as expected. But right now I have buffer size is 23. Whereas here, I had buffer size to be 10. So it seems like the buffer size was increasing by itself. So let's observe in the man pages why we have this difference. So it says right here that um, if the buffer is not large enough to hold the line. So if you realize right here, we had 10. You have, we had initialized the buffer size to 10. But because 10 was actually less, it wasn't large enough to hold a line this long. What happened was that under the hood, get line resized it using real lock and updated this line pointer right here and the buffer size as necessary. So 23 actually has the capacity to hold the new length of this line. So I hope this makes sense. So finally, let me show you guys another flavor of the get line function. Now from our code, we are actually allocating memory by ourselves dynamically by using malloc. But the thing is that with getLine, you could you could skip this step and allow getLine do this for you. So it's going to do the calculation for you and find out enough space. It's going to allocate enough space to handle whatsoever string that you pass in or it reads from the string. So to do that, I'm just going to change this from malloc whatsoever to null. Just like that, as simple as that. So once I do this, what will happen is that getLine would dynamically allocate the memory for us by itself. And then the only responsibility we have to do is to free that memory once we are done. So let me just show you some documentation right here. So it says if asterisk line pointer is null, um, which is what we just did right now, then get line would allocate a buffer for storing the line, which should be freed by the user program. In this case, the value of asterisk n is ignored. So the value of asterisk n will be ignored because we are not doing it ourselves. So we will be writing 10 times the size of a char if we are doing it by ourselves using malloc. But since getLine is doing it for us, it's going to ignore this value and come up with a value by itself dynamically and automatically under the hood. So let me just save this and run this. So hit enter. So enter name. So I could type in a name like um, Daniel Agapetos wonderful name isn't it so hit enter it tells me right here name is daniel agapetos as expected but check this out it tells me buffer size is 120 so get line is doing this by itself okay so it's dynamically allocating 120 bytes right here because 120 is large enough to handle or to store this text what if i typed in something that was larger than 120 so I can't think of a name that's larger than 120 characters. So I'm just going to type in something random. Okay, so this will be larger than 120. So I'm going to hit enter. Check this out, guys. It tells me buffer size is 240. So it resized itself to make sure that it has enough capacity to handle whatsoever line of you know strings I pass in or it reads from the stream. All right, so I hope this makes sense. So guys, this is it for the getLine function. So um, I know we did not get to use it in context of creating a shell program, but for now, I just want us to feast on the basics. And subsequently, we're going to be seeing how it all fits together in the context of building our own shell program. And as usual, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a like. Like, give it a like, you know, help me beat the YouTube algorithm. Drop a comment if you have something to say to me. And that's it from me for now. I'll see you in the next one.